it's Doris with all the books and I'm having such perfect lighting that I had to just film another video. So this is one I've been wanting to do for quite a while and nonfiction November is the perfect time to do it. I want to talk about adventure nonfiction. Um, when Olive from A Book Olive, who is the brilliant host of Adventure Nonfiction, when she put out her um, announcement video this year, she talked about how she hopes people will, through this, discover um, an area of nonfiction that they really, really appreciate. And I so have. That was one of my, well, one of my goals for this year was to find some nonfiction authors that I really appreciate. Um, and then I want to read all of their work because I felt like I was that way with fiction. That it was really easy to read authors of fiction and go, oh, I want to read more of their work. But I just nonfiction seems so topical that I never thought to do that with nonfiction. So I said, well, I'm going to find nonfiction authors that I feel the same way about this year. And I've totally done that. But I've also found this area of nonfiction that I love, adventure nonfiction. And I actually Googled it and found like it was a thing, or at least for some people it is. And I found several titles that I was very interested in. So I've got quite a list going and I'm just loving it. So anyway, let's just get into a few suggestions for you. The first one that I read and realized that I love this was The Lost City of the Monkey God by Douglas Preston. And this I picked up for two reasons, and I'll tell you about the second one when I tell you about another book, but the main reason is that it's set in Honduras, and um, I lived in Honduras for a year, and I spent a lot of time there, and very intrigued by the country, and this is a huge ancient civilization rivaling the Mayans and the Aztecs in scope, but that was just recently discovered like in 2012 like wow that happens in this day and age so i enjoyed this from beginning to end thoroughly and another thing i love about adventure nonfiction, two things um the narrative nonfiction vibe so adventure nonfiction is the kind of like anyway <laughs> It's written as narrative nonfiction, so it's very engrossing. It's very fast-paced. It just pushes you along. It's not what you typically might think of with nonfiction. Oh, boring textbook. Not at all. The other thing that I love about it is the way it incorporates so many aspects of the sciences and peoples and life in general. Um, so you often get it with biographies, you get sociology and different branches of science, sciences, uh, pop culture from the times. It's just fascinating, fascinating. So for example, this one, you get obviously the Honduran peoples, the environment, um, the culture, politics, modern technology, this ancient civilization, um, parasites, so much. Fascinating, fascinating read. Highly recommend, and highly recommend this author as well. He's one that I found I enjoy. Okay, and then another one, um, the Dragon Behind the Glass by Emily Voigt. This is a true story of power, obsession, and the world's most coveted fish. This is all about the arowana, but not just any arowana. It's the Asian arowana, which is, wow, so expensive. <laughs> um, which, as you can imagine, causes obsession and power struggles and just 
intrigue and you know you name it but also the environmental aspects that I love reading about and so much more so much more Highly recommend this one as well. Um, the author, I would love to read more by her. I'm not sure that she has anything else out yet, but this was excellent, excellent. And then, as I mentioned with the first book, um, I got pulled into The Lost City of the Monkey God. Oop, that's the back of it. Ta-da! Because of this book, the Lost City of Z, The Tale of Deadly Obsession in the Amazon. So this is another um, book that was super popular uh, a little over a year ago on BookTube. It seems like everyone was talking about it. This is by David Gran. He's another um, author that is a pull me in, buy me read. I read his... Um, Flower Moon. It was a National Book Award shortlist last year. Nonfiction, anyway. Um, but yeah, this is another one that just pulls in. This one is more biographical about um, Percy Fawcett, 1925, um, and how he was searching for this lost city. Uh, so these are really neat to read together because you get like the more early view of searching for artifacts and then the more modern take on it. So yeah, super recommend these very much, very much. Okay, and then it's even in the classics. So I read Travels with Charlie in Search of America by John Steinbeck. I read this last year. I, I love John Steinbeck. I make no secret of that fact. And this is one of his later works. And he actually, uh, it's also um, a more uncharacteristic nonfiction. He wrote some nonfiction, but this is one of those. And he's more well known for his fiction, definitely. But he actually, in his later years, um, kind of, I guess before campers were a thing he made his own custom camper in the back of a pickup and just set out in tour of the whole United States of America and just his observations on what America was like at the time and it's fascinating um, 1961 looks like 1962 so it's just a really neat snapshot of the United States and very much changing times in the early 60s, as you can imagine. Just little hints at, you know, precursors to the civil rights movement and interstate travel, just a lot. Fascinating, fascinating study. Okay, and then I started researching adventure nonfiction after these and trying to find more. I just want more, more, more. So one of the ones that I found and I've read so far is River of Doubt, Theodore Roosevelt's Darkest Journey by Candace Millard. And Candace Millard has become another InstaBuy author. And the great thing about some of these books is that they are a little bit older, so they're backlisted. And, you know, you can have the author's name in your mind or written down somewhere and whenever you go to use bookstores just see if there are any by that person and so awesome but yeah this one is um Theodore Roosevelt after his presidential run and he actually ran for an extra term beyond the ones he served and lost and was a little depressed about that and ended up exploring a new branch of the Amazon, yeah, in later life. So this was, you know, fascinating. You learn a little more about good old Teddy when, you know, he's a little softer around the edges. And, you know, with years comes a little wisdom and a lot more understanding. So very insightful into him as a person and how he changed over time. 
and also obviously the exploration of the Amazon and the, the peoples back then and great, great read. And then I have a couple that I haven't read yet, but they're, you know, up soon. Turn Right at Machu Picchu, Rediscovering the Lost City One Step at a Time by Mark Adams. Um, Machu Picchu is on my bucket list, isn't it for everyone? <laughs> um, but this one is more, I think, um, a travel log. So I think that'll be a neat spin on the adventure nonfiction genre, if you will. And this one, I don't even know how I found it, but I think it's hilarious that I did and it's perfect for me. Shark Drunk, The Art of Catching a Large Shark from a Tiny Rubber Dinghy in a Big Ocean by Morton Stroxness. So this is up near Iceland, I believe. Two guys in a little rubber boat fishing for a big shark. Yeah, so I grew up in Florida. You know, sharks are a way of life down there. So really fascinated to read this. And yeah, it's, it's just amusing to me. Anyway, that's what I've got. Oops, I hope that you are excited about adventure nonfiction as well. It's a great area and so broad. There's so many different places to explore in this big wide world. And it's just fun to go on exploring with these authors so who are you know a lot of them adventurers themselves anyway thanks so much for watching and i'll be back soon bye